That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Not everybody's here tonight. You're right. Tom, there's trouble right there. Are you on? Next week, next week, council. Hey, sir. I'm doing well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're a lot. You're a lot. Busy tonight. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> These aren't bad. This, you want to go to the council meetings for excitement. Oh, yeah. Get your bag of popcorn and come on. I'll have one next week. I'll get you one. They got a beer vendor goes around and sells. Uh, <laughs> they do metal detectors go <laughs> cold beer on that. Owen. I mean, I'm not. Cold beer. Yeah. We didn't see it either. We're not allowed to. No. It's all like. Away. Yeah. I just. I'm, I don't. AJ takes photos too. We'll get your photo taken, like with the mayor or whoever you know. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yep. Right? Yeah. It was fair. <laughs> How are you doing, Bob? I'm bringing to order the Larkford Redevelopment Commission of March 13th, 2017. Executive Director Brian Messmore? Here. Chairman Tony Abbott? Here. Vice Chairman Aaron Cook? Here. Secretary Dennis Hutchins? Present. Member Bob Rival? Present. Member Paul Seymour Sr.? Present. Lawrenceburg School Board Member Brian Johnson? Here. And City Attorney Del Welton? Here. Okay, if um, you've all had an opportunity to read your minutes from the previous meeting, I'll take a motion to accept. Motion to accept. So motion. moved. And second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes passed. Does anybody have any announcements? Mr. Chairman, I have an announcement. We have received our RFQs for the Civic Park component of the Riverfront Development Project. We have received one from Strand and Associates and Structure Point. Uh, we are scheduling a joint session for April 12th at 5 o'clock. Um, we will give uh, the, the uh, initial agenda would be to give each uh, of the companies 30 minutes to present with a 15-minute Q&A, and then we'll allow some time to have the other team come in and do the same with them. Uh, so roughly one will be at five and one will be at six. Open to public? Open to public. April 12th. All righty. Any other announcements? <coughs> now I'll move on to the financial report. Um, as of March 6th, 2017, the balance for redevelopment is $3,375,155.37. And after our um, committed monies to projects, it would actually be $2,055,825.83. Okay. Any other <coughs> Moving on to new business. Al Shran, business proposal. Evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm here representing my wife, Lisa, and myself, uh, previous owners of Hidden Treasures Gift Shop, which is now closed. Uh, we closed it about a week ago, hoping to open up a business in similar as well as another business. Um, I guess I'll go a little bit of history about Lisa and I. Uh, we came down here as a one of the five pop-up stores back in 2012. Uh, we are proud to say we are the only one that still exists. We, uh, we came here thinking uh, this is an opportunity to run a business. We were open six, seven days a week, every day. 
never took a vacation, worked very hard at it, because that was the opportunity given us. We didn't take anything for granted. We were helped for the first six months, and then we paid half the next six months, along with everybody else for the first six months, but everybody left, and we were on our own. Like being on a de deserted island as the only retail business in downtown Lawrenceburg. But we survived. We worked hard. We supported our businesses down here, as well became a part of the community. Um, in those four and a half years we've been here, there's a lot we can reflect on. And we've dealt with the customers of Lawrenceburg, the people who visit Lawrenceburg, um, and understand what they're looking for. And I think as I look at each one of you gentlemen and ladies at the, at the board there, uh, we all want to make this area a destination. That's what we always hear about. So that's why we're trying to come up, come up with uh, the Whiskey City Antique Mall. Um, I think Whiskey City is very um, prevalent with what we are trying to name this city. Uh, the Whiskey City Antique Mall, we were looking at bringing in 40 vendors, different vendors, all in different square footage. Uh, with each one of these vendors, you, they're going to have at least one to 200 followers. And if, say, they come here once a month, that's six to 8,000 people that be coming to this city to see what we have to offer. It also helps restaurants, other businesses, bars, when these people come down here and see what we have to offer. Um, it'll make the bike race, the regatta, Strong's Pizza, and places like that. Uh, and obviously the event center, convention center, uh, much more successful we we believe every time we have people come in here people at the hotel people come down here for conventions they're amazed at how beautiful the city is their only complaint is there's no place to shop it's always been a big problem because most of our stores are specialty stores Lisa and I sit in that store and we see these people every day we talk to them every day and the number one thing they ask for is antiques we don't have an antique mall so that's what we're wanting to do put it on walnut street the old work one facility um, expenses for that are just the putting up the partitions inside the store that's the major expense and if we have 40 vendors in there uh, we're wanting to open this up May 15th of this year and we firmly believe we can get 40 vendors in there at that time we already have people wanting to be a vendor the other thing that we're looking at and this is because of our our store at Hidden Treasures is the ladies boutique fashion store and uh, believe me it's not something that I want to do okay but it's something that I see is very profitable in our business um, women shop the convention goers while the guys are in, in meetings or even if the women are here they are looking for things for women something to take home something to reflect on of Lawrenceburg which would be purses clothing boots jewelry it's very successful and it's what makes our business go and uh, if you had ever come in our store during the holidays, you would see how much flies out of our store on the women's side of things. We would like to put that over on uh, 9 East High. And the nice thing about these two businesses are they connect. You can walk in on High Street, walk down the hallway, and would walk right into the um, antique mall and vice versa. The other thing we want to mention is um, this is the kind of business that we want to work six days a week. We would be closed on Mondays. The only day we'd be closed. Because this whole town is closed on Mondays. But our hours would be different. We'd stay open until 8 o'clock at night every 
one of those days except Sunday where we'd close at 5. So we're going to put an effort into working from 11 o'clock to 8 o'clock every day and then on Sunday from noon to 5. Sorry? 10. 10 to 5 on Sunday? Okay. That's why I have her here to help me out. But anyhow, um, I don't think anybody up there who knows Lisa and I can say we haven't worked at it. We put a lot of effort into this town. We promote this town. And I like to feel like we became part of the community as we're involved on, in almost everything that goes on down here. And with that, I'll let you got questions for me. Fire away. Question. Um, on getting all these people to uh, come down and set up in that work one, what way do you go about that? I mean, is there a network of antique people that you contact? There is. And uh, there's a lovely lady next door to our business at Interiors Embellished. And if you see down here once a month, during the spring and summer and fall, you have the antique thing over at uh, the fairgrounds. And if you ever buy there on a Sunday, that's a zoo. There's thousands of people that go there. And then Sharon and Linda have their over the moon thing twice a year, which will have two to 300 people standing outside waiting to get in. And Friday night, most things are already gone. And they run Saturday as well. There's never anything left. Um, one of the things that Lisa and I have discussed and analyzed is there are two other um, antique malls in this area. One being in Fairfield on Route 4, up by show the old Showcase Malls, which uh, is about 25 to 30 minutes away. 275, come down the loop, you hit the Whiskey City Antique Mall. Okay? You go another 25 minutes south, you hit Florence Antique Mall. So guess what the women will do? They'll make that track. They'll go from there, start somewhere, but they'll visit all three. That's what ladies love to do. And guys. Um, so I think it's going to be very successful. We charge by square foot. I would say right now we probably have about 10 people. We have, and we haven't pushed it because there's no we, there's no reason to unless we get your approval to go ahead and go with this. You mean 10 vendors? Yes. Oh. I think once and then at this uh, over the moon, which is what two weeks? Board with jury demand. It's not going to be a flea market. The screening it's process. process. Correct. The screening process. Exactly. It's not going to be a flea market. It's not going to be something like going out to Monroe. Okay. And seeing Trader's World or something like this. This is going to be nice furniture, lamps, and things of this nature. How long would it take for you to. Ma'am, would, would you walk up the podium, please? How long would I'm it sorry. take you to get from, from 10 to 40? I think once the uh, over the moon is, we will probably be full. Is Sharon giving you any indication that she can help you with that? Sharon Tremendous said May 15th we'd be open. Pardon me? Sharon so said we should have everybody ready to go May 15th. <coughs> That's like two months. That answer your question? Yeah, but Al, you ask them, um, you stated rather that you were asking for construction help mm -hmm. on the boats. Do you have a, we don't have any numbers in front of us. Well, that's, I, we've got, I've got two bids, okay? One was for the boutique. The thing we got to do in there is knock down a couple walls, okay? And put up a, a slat wall. 
That's all we have to do in there. As far as the antique mall, it's partitions. We'd have to build 40 to 45 booths, per se. And when we say booths, we're talking about maybe a pegboard, okay? Maybe 100 square feet. Some of them would be 80 square feet. There's different partitions as, as your charts <coughs> show you. Um, and they would be paying the square footage of each one. It would probably be about six feet high. Okay? So the lighting comes down, shines through. There's no disturbance. And it's, uh, it's just very simple. And people put their furniture up against it. They decorate it. They make it look like a room is what they do. They make vignettes. Okay. <laughs> What I would like to ask you to do, Al, is to bring us a business plan, show us what you're putting into it, and then what you need from us. Because right now we don't have a dollar amount or anything that you're doing, nothing. So I understand. I understand. But how long, I mean, uh, with, with the boutique, it's probably $5,000 max. Okay? I got a bid for that give that to me Friday I didn't get a copy of it but he he called me up on the phone um, we're only looking at five thousand dollars who is it Al <coughs> no he's, he's a friend of Sharon's he's out okay. Yeah. okay okay that's that's fine I, I don't care if it's five thousand or two hundred thousand I mean, we're just trying to do steps from all this from now on and one thing is we like to see a business plan how much money the the business owners is going to put into themselves just than what they need. Right. I mean, it's just relocation and taking walls down. We've been in business for four and a half years. We're just moving. I mean, we've got we've thousands invested in what we have already done. We've already, I mean, I had, to, I had no choice, um, but I had to re start renting the location for the boutique in January. So I paid in January, February, March without even opening the place. Okay, I'm just paying rent. There was some Which isn't fun. There's some mm. issues with the building that we were in. That is the reason we left. We wanted to buy the building, and there's some structural issues, so we had to, and then they tried to raise our rent, so we said, well, you know, we've got time to move. That's another question I have on the antique mall part. Mario, wasn't there a mold problem in that building? Did they get that taken care of? or? I think they got under control. There was some dampness. Part of the basement's dirt. Um, it was a lot of moisture okay because I knew that's why the former tenant one of the reasons they they were moving out was because of that they had some machines uh, humidifiers and fans um, that weren't kept up with right. How to much say, to say there's a mold issue I wouldn't I didn't see any I wouldn't say that I mean I've been downstairs okay <coughs> I didn't see any dampness whatsoever mm -hmm. when I went down there in the last and I've had a key to it for the last four weeks, and I haven't seen any moisture. It's just on my own, on my own part. But I just think the biggest thing, you know, we all we all have an opportunity here now. Okay. I mean, as far as what the city council is doing and and this administration um, can't do anything more than applaud for what they've been doing so far. And uh, it seems like you guys are going in the same direction, which is awesome. The big thing is, um, I think what we're bringing here is exactly what the people have asked us. This is what they're telling us. I mean, we're not doing this because we're kind of wild hair up my caboose. We're doing this because of the people we talk to every single day. And they all ask for the same thing. They're all asking for the antique malls, which we don't have. No. And, and, and the, women, the women are the ones who shop. I mean, you guys don't come in our store. I mean, you might be in our store once or twice. But you're not the one shopping in our store. The ladies do. And that's what they buy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Have you signed a lease on both of these uh, buildings? Just the, just the boutique. Just the boutique. So you don't have a lease on the antique mall? Correct. And we haven't done anything there yet. And I asked, I asked Greg to hold off because I think he's got other people interested in it. So, you know, I was hoping we could do this. Dale? Yes, sir. Don't we have an interest in that property ourselves? Yes, sir. In both of these properties, uh, they are uh, currently in foreclosure and bankruptcy. And is it to our benefit to fill these properties? Um, I would want to...
think about that. I wouldn't want to give an opinion one way or the other, kind of on the spot, but it's something we need to think about. Yes, it is. Um, I think obviously, as a general, we want our properties filled, but uh, there are a lot of implications with a foreclosure and a bankruptcy. It's very complicated. We have a hearing tomorrow morning, in fact, oh. in the bankruptcy court. And I understand that, and, I, and I've talked to, to Brian about it, okay? Mark's had his hand. And, and because it was a question of mine. I'd like, what's my, what is our, you know? Well, we'd like to do a lease to own or, a con, you know, or something in the contract that says we get to buy it for X amount of dollars. <coughs> but we don't know how that plays between these two sides. Well, and to be clear, we don't own this property. Greg Davis owns his property, and we would never interfere in any way with him renting it to you. That's that's not what we're talking about here. It's not up to us whether or not you rent and occupy and fill these properties with businesses. I think this commission does need some legal advice though, on whether or not to invest in uh, improving these properties and what that could mean. And I'm not saying that it means anything or what it means. I would need to research that. Well, it's the heart of your entertainment district, and I would hate to see a doctor's office or a law office go in there. A law office? You know? <laughs> okay, no <well, that's> offense. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying something that's not what we we have foreseen for this entertainment district. And the big thing, and, and just <laughs> real quick, the big thing that I see, okay, <coughs> and, and it's, it, it is somewhat of a knock on downtown. Okay, we want to make this a destination area. Okay, and when you come down, you do all, mostly all you see is law offices, banks, insurance companies. Chiropractors. And, 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 you know, and that's not what makes this an entertainment district or a destination. For that to happen, you've got to have things for people to do. Uh, you've got a beautiful hotel. You've got a beautiful convention center. I think Lisa and I have a great idea to help make things go down here. Okay? And I think it's an opportunity to bring thousands of people down here to see what this great city has to offer. And I don't use that term loosely. I really... I mean, we're, I'm not down here. I've lost lots of money down here, okay, running a business. But I did it because we were made promises way back when, when we came here. And some of the things we were made promises didn't come true for another two years, such as the convention center and the hotel. We had to wait two years when we thought it was going to be open within six months. Um, but so be it. But we stuck by it. And we're, you know, I think we're successful now. We're not taking checks six home, months. okay? But we like being down here, and we want to be part of this growing community and the success of this town. Mike, do you have something to say? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get. I've got two questions: one for now, and one for now. Make sure there's no stumbling blocks or surprises down the road. Mike, we can't hear you up there. Al, the question for you is, I know you said with the boutique you've got some walls to take out. Have you contacted Carl Fryman or Lawrenceburg Building Department yet? I have not. And the reason I'm asking that is so it's not a last minute surprise, that being a commercial structure, um, building is not my area, but you need to contact him to see if you're going to have to have architectural drawings and have it go through the... Uh, State Building Commission and get a release from them. It, they're non-bearing walls. It's just well, they, and there again, I, just yeah, I can say that you can. It's not my area. I really suggest that you contact Carl just to make sure. Okay. Um, right. Because, like I say, commercial structures are totally different than any residential structure. So I, I just want you to be on top of things so you don't get a, a delay or a hold up down the well, road. Been fair to Mike. I um, appreciate that. Thank and Dell, the, the other question, and this one's for you, and I just don't want to see a problem down the road. Now, if they open this antique mall, you know, they'll have to go through, get their zoning certificates, um, get a new Lawrenceburg City business license. What about the 10 to 40 vendors? Now, I won't need anything for zoning, but will they, for our ordinance, be required to get a city business license from the clerk treasurer's office? That's a good question. I think we would need to look at, or I would need to look at how we set up the old antique mall. 
uh, and, and give an opinion if, on that. If they too. would need to, they would need to know that information up front. I don't know whether they would or not, but I, I just I don't want any surprises for you guys. One one big question I don't know if it has it or not is the sprinkler system. Was it? Did you have to have one for the unemployment office? But if this being there is one in there, because say with it being a store, I know there would Both have to be one. Both buildings mm -hmm. have them. Sprinkler. Okay. Okay. And the other thing that's is good. We would be responsible for all state taxes. All right. And then they are required a vendor's license in the state of Indiana. When you do something like this, it's a vendor's license that they can apply for. Each uh, individual yeah. one would be required and have to show it to us that they did do that. Okay. Well, uh, and, and first of all, just personally, I think it's an incredible idea. I think, uh, you know, our, one of our best signs in Lawrenceburg says Antique Mall, you know, even though there isn't an Antique Mall anymore. Uh, but these are things that I, that I think when uh, what uh, Chairman Abbott was saying is that these are things that would be uh, best served as part of a business plan, you know, as part of a process whereby we can relay to you the, the questions that we have that we ask of each business that comes before us an existing business that needs uh, that's requesting some uh, assistance in some way so that all these questions can be answered uh, before it's presented uh, to these guys because you know they need to know the answers before they can make a decision um, and that's a process that can be conducted uh, with Chairman Abbott with Mr. Messmore uh, with Mrs. Brookbank uh, with myself you know beforehand and then when you present We've got all those answers. One of the things we do, like I, like I told you before, we have a bid for like five grand on the boutique, the ladies' fashion store. Hey, um, Al, make a suggestion. Maybe you could separate the two requests right. based on this for tonight for the boutique to get that going. Would that be helpful? Well, yeah, I'd like to. to I mean, hopefully that's what I mean. We're done right now, okay? We're out of our store. We have no we room. Totally, I mean, that's no fun moving 3,500 square feet of a full building, which is a loft, a second floor, a first floor, and a basement. basement full of things. Oh, it's completely beautiful inside now and empty. All right. We would like to open this, this boutique on April 1, which is very possible, which is what we have to do is if we do the, the remodeling and then have to get our stuff in there and stock it. See, that's why I would want a business plan, what you want the money for. That way we have a list and exactly how much. <clears throat> and another question would be, did, have you been to Main Street to ask Main Street for any help for the money? We haven't. We, you know, and let me tell you something. That's not something. You have or have Have not. Okay. And it's not something I really wanted to do is come come here okay this is our business that's how we look at it this is Lisa and my business that we've been down here okay and we've been thrown to to the wolves down here um, for whatever reason we have in the past I think we're accepted now I, I look around here and everybody here in here I consider a friend all right we live in the Western Hills we come down here every day we frequent the restaurants frequent other businesses we support the community we're involved with fall fest we're involved with main street um, you know we are supportive of the town we really consider this our home to be honest with you I'm never at home my animals hate me. okay <laughs> but um, I think the big thing I would ask tonight if we can and we'll put the boat the antique mall um, maybe we can get on the next agenda but I'd like to request, you know, if it's, well, $5,000 for the remodeling for the boutique so we can get this opening for one. I mean, if I have to give you a written um, Are we going to be estimate, here another four years? No. Oh. Oh. We'll be here. For, I hope we will be here the rest of our, you know, my life. Hopefully not hers, but my life. Well, you're going to use a contractor of some sort to do that boutique, Correct. right? So they could come up with an invoice to Correct. justify them. Correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I don't I don't have a problem with separating these tonight. They're they're out of business from one standpoint. They've already moved into the other location. They have a lease in the other location that they've been paying on since January or February. So they, they want to get that open. I understand Mr. Clark's issue, 
but Cindy Campbell was in there with the sewing thing, and before that, the engineers were in there. The unemployment office was in there. I, I don't know why we couldn't at least talk about helping them with that. That's that's up to you guys. I'm just trying to set. Uh, when somebody asks them, us for help, there's certain things they have to do have to each in time, whether it's for a dollar, whether it's for two million, and a business plan, what's going in there, what you need your money for. Have you gone somewhere else to ask for help, like Main Street? That would be one of the questions on there that you wouldn't have to answer. I mean, that's no, that's I'm, all I'm trying to do. I'm just to set our procedure for it. It's up to you guys. You want to do this? I mean, that's fine with me. I'm only suggesting that maybe we separate the two for tonight. That'd be fine. And the only thing that we're using this money for. I mean, is they are really separate. Modeling. That's I mean, all it's for. The list of the start expenses. We're only asking you for the top one. The rest of them are on us. Yeah, they're already separate. Here. One's a business proposal, okay. the other yeah. one's a re relocation yeah. request. They don't have any numbers? No. It's for knocking down walls. That's, that's pretty and broad. And it's for putting up a, a slat wall, wall and knocking two holes mm -hmm. in, in a cubicle in a octagon room so people can look all the way through from the front window all the way to the back. What it does, yeah. knocking these two rooms down, it takes the room I can may step up and show you. Sure. It takes the room from that wall to about me. Now when it takes two rooms down, that wall to about here. So it increases a lot of space. It's a big square. And you you're saying that's gonna cost five thousand? Knock out the walls, okay, to put in two dressing rooms and to punch, to punch two hall, holes in walls with glass. The boutique, the boutique's probably going to require some changing rooms for people to buy close. I'm guessing. Yeah, and we should have had dressing rooms in our old place, and we didn't. <clears throat> but the big thing, $5,000 of the high, that was that his estimate covering anything that unforeseen, as we found out down here, when you do any kind of remodeling of these places, you never know what, to, what you're going to come up with expecting. It could be 4000 It could be 3500 He's just saying it's not going to be more than 5000 Hopefully it'll be 3500 Okay? I'm asking you if you can just help us with that and the expenses, what it ever cost us, that's what it would be for you guys. It wouldn't be any more than 5000 Did you get an estimate from Dave Staub as well? I did not. He's, no. I have Paul Seymour gave, gave me his name. name and he's tough to get a hold of. I dropped talk to him. But he's, he's busy, as I asked Paul to give me a, a bid. He's busy as well. And I know we can shave some off that bid because I don't want it glassed. I want it straight oh. through. So that price would come off of that bid also. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, have you requested a build out yeah. from the property owner? Have you approached uh, the owner? What was that? that. I mean, are, are they willing to do the build out for you? The owner of the building. When you say build out, you're saying yeah, knock down the walls. Knock down the no. The retrofit it to your purpose as part of I your lease agreement. Okay. I'm not. I don't know if that's typical practice, but I don't you know. know. Did his, he do that for the frame? I mean, well, he, we he owned the framery. Did he do it there? I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. When we took over um, where we're at now, at 134 Walnut. Oh, that big um, we paid. For that, that was a big problem when we were coming down here. We, we had back and forth, back and forth with Main Street because that was our building. But to open up that store with a wall, as soon as you walk in, there's a wall six feet away. Um, <coughs> it's still a problem to this day because there's another wall 10 feet deep. And they think the store is just that. Yeah. They don't realize it goes around. They don't realize it goes upstairs. But it's the same thing we have here. And when we finally got approval from the owners of the 134 Walnut to knock down half the wall, okay? This is the same problem here. I want people to be able to look <coughs> through it and see all the way from front to the back so they know what we have to offer. You know, it's, it's just like a picture. It's got to be inviting. And if it's not inviting, people don't come in. Now, how long is your lease, can I ask? With it's a one-year lease. One year? I mean, if it comes uh -huh. down to this, I have no problem, and Lisa and I both talked about this too, okay? I have no trouble making a commitment to this town. We've been here four and a half years. Believe me, we're committed to this town. 
we're, I wouldn't be here unless I thought we could be successful and, and we really want to help this part of the problem there <coughs> Al is that Greg is filed under for protection under federal law and the city has other issues so we have to not step <coughs> on those toes mm -hmm. at all okay. that's what I asked Mr. Messmore well I, I want to say though right. that I've been in the boutique space and that was where Cindy Campbell was right and I can clearly understand why he wants to knock down that front room it's like eight feet in there's a wall right there yeah so I don't know what that's gonna cost or whatever and building a couple of dressing rooms I would think would be essential for a boutique for people to be able to change clothes whether or not you know we're willing to help them I personally speak of course for myself and I'm willing to try to give them some help tonight to get that first location started and I think that's only fair um, have you come before redevelopment other other this is the first time in my four and a half years we've okay. been here okay. but <clears throat> I'd like to ask one question to Pat Pat is there money available for something like this from Main Street to help the business owners currently all we would be able to offer um, as part of that we started doing this probably about six years ago as part of our paint facade program when a new business would come in we would offer them 50 percent it's a match situation 50 percent up to a thousand to retrofit a space for their business um, and then we also have the sign and awning grants 50 percent up to a thousand on those so that's what we have at this point in time we don't have anything else right now okay thank you <coughs> I know you've got a maximum amount but do you have a least that you could get by with because you're going to come back because of the antique mall yeah, yeah. I would say the lease would be like 3500 it's a $1,500 swing there I mean if, if that's if, if the 3500 is what we can get so be it so be it okay but I'm just saying I think I mean what they gave me is a max of 5000 and the only reason I got that is because he was covering himself in less with something that came up. He, there's two doors on these two rooms that we want knocked down. Those two doors would be turned into part of the dressing room. So he's trying to save every cost there is possible. Um, we could go without the windows. Well, Al, I'd like to see you get in there and get started. I mean, you've been running it for months. But I mean, it's it, believe me, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next few weeks. Yeah. You know, you come down here all the time. You know, I think, you know, we've helped a lot of people out. Um, he hasn't come and asked for a dime. I think the location is going to benefit him a lot from, uh, for the simple fact, with Strong's. That's why we want to stay uh, open until 8 o'clock. you got people standing there for a half hour, 45 minutes, to an hour. Okay? They have nothing they can do except stand there. And they what do you mean <coughs> Strong's Pizza? Strong's Pizza. Mm -hmm. This gives the women some place to... To go to they were yeah. already walking down to where we were now plus you got Millie's <laughs> plus you got the framery okay and I think what we need to really and, and, and talking with other, other merchants this is what we have to do we have to make people realize that um, we can't support ourselves with, with just <coughs> downtown Lawrenceburg okay we got to count on Greendale we got to count on Hidden Valley we got to count on you know Aurora Rising Sun Hillsboro okay Cincinnati <coughs> Kentucky um, and, and as well, you know, we've got we've got to stay open until eight o'clock at least. Hey, people work during the day. They can't shop until you know after work. So that's one of the things we're going to do. We are going to be open until eight o'clock. I would like to make a motion. I, I got one more thing to ask before you do that, Ness. Um, I was going back to the very beginning. Al, who um, in 2012, who who lied to you and told you that that event center is going to be open within six months? It wasn't a lie. It was just that. It was public. That way. When we when we be, tried to become when we came down here and we were approached about being a pop up. Yeah. Okay. We were told that you know that thing was supposed to be open in sometime in 2013, earliest latest 2014. So two two years then. Well, a year. Oh, we all know six it was months to a year. Yeah. Yeah. What, what year did it open? Did 14? Four, it opened 14, didn't it? It opened at the end of 14. Yeah, December. 14th. It, was, it was the same year then. It was a long time though. Oh, believe me, 30. we were here for two years, 12, 13, and 14. 
It wasn't the person, you know, yeah. you know, we talked to Pat about it because Pat was one who recruited us. Yeah. And, and it was just things that we, we all thought was going to happen. And it didn't. It took much longer to open that, that hotel and events center. And, it, and the other thing, what made it really tough, just so you guys, everybody knows, we, we stayed, okay? We committed, we worked seven days a week when we came down here as a new store. We were here every day because we thought this was an opportunity for us to have a business. We opened up with two little rooms and we turned into three floors, okay? We've helped out with it. We work with AJ, wherever AJ's at. AJ's gone. <laughs> we work with AJ. You know, he used our loft, loft so he could be start his business. And look how successful he's become. But we were down here every day, and all of a sudden, the other five pop-ups were gone. Okay, <coughs> the first year you were here, how much of, was your rent that total year? Did the did the city pay your rent the city whole first pay. year? Main Street helped everybody for the first six months. That was okay. part of the deal. They wow. helped everybody for the first six months with rent and utilities. Tony, that was the pop-up right. program. Well, pop yeah. Plan. So the first year, you got $13,000 almost, then $12,383. <coughs> so that's the waiting months, for the event center. Well, the remaining six months, we paid half our utilities and half, and half our, our rent. rent. That was that was and we were the only one here i got that paperwork we were on the deserted island there was nobody here and if you want to tell somebody that they're going to come down here and just shop at hidden treasures that's the only place they can shop at that's what we were up against and it was brutal and believe me paying half the rent half the utilities i sunk and it never really got better until the last year now we have other businesses down here and strongs and other bars and it's in the hotel and event center is open yes Dale uh, thank you chairman if I may just a suggestion and feel free to take it or leave it but would it be permissible uh, to the Commission if I uh, if we table this and I get with all of you guys and get with mr. Messmore and mrs. Brookbank and we put together a list of things that we would like to know uh, about these proposals and then I also can take a look at whatever legal aspects we need to look at and that will make this conversation a lot more streamlined I mean we've been talking for 45 minutes now we haven't really been getting anywhere Alan you, you don't have to defend yourself you you're you've been wonderful to downtown and we want to be wonderful to you but that's not really what we're talking about we have just a few questions I think that these guys need answered and it might be more helpful to to do it that way it's just a suggestion and I'd be willing to do that as part of doing kind of the same thing for everyone who has a similar proposal I, you know I understand that though okay my only concern is time and I hate to come here now it seems like a last moment but we had no other choice okay our rent and our utilities is about fifteen hundred dollars a month yes sir but I think what these guys are saying is we don't have any information in front of us right so I mean you got to take care of things legally I can get you the estimate on the on the repair or remodeling and I can have that to you by tomorrow probably. Mr. Chairman, I would be willing to discuss a motion of thirty five hundred dollars, not to exceed thirty five hundred dollars for for the boutique, um, and treat this as a separate issue, not tied to the other one. Well one thing that we'd like to do is we also put a time limit on that too. You have to be in the business for a year two years or whatever or if that money's owed back to us that's, that's always been pretty standard so that's situation one thing I'm with us we've got no issues with that yeah we're here four and a half years I'm not I made anywhere. that offer I made that offer three years ago I said hey, I'll, I'll be here another three years if you can help us Hell, I don't think anybody's not wanting you guys yeah. to get open as quick as you can and we, we're sure you're gonna open you've got a lease you've been paying on a lease I I think we're gonna make a motion for thirty five hundred dollars not to exceed thirty five hundred dollars and that's with Dell working out absolutely mm -hmm. I'll second that motion I have a first and a second for 3,500 uh, all in favor aye. aye all against aye okay we'll do a roll call huh? all right roll call member Aaron Cook no member Dennis Hutchins aye member Bob Reibolt aye 
Member Paul Seymour? Aye. That's three to one. Yep. <coughs> Motion Here's passed. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Al, you'll deal with Del Walden on the rest of it. And no, I, if I call this construction guy tomorrow, you can probably start Wednesday. Get with Dell. Yeah, uh, get with uh, Del. Get with, I understand. Mike's hard to deal with. Mike's back in the corner and never forget. So you have to, Al, you have to see Carl Fryman. I will. I'll see that's, him. That's critical. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving on, uh, business expansion. Terry Miller, come to the podium, please. Guys, I don't know if I have enough copies for everybody. I didn't, uh, didn't know it would be uh, that many members. But uh, if you could share, could I ask you to do that? We can share one. It's not that much information, so, but hopefully it's uh, concise and to the point. And I know, looking at this crowd, the time is of the essence. So I'll try to move it along the best I can. Uh, yeah, you have 12 seconds. <laughs> 15, 15 minutes. Well, I, I appreciate the commission's valuable time, Thank you. obviously. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. My name is Terry Miller, and I am Tri-State Driver. I've been there for uh, eight years. We've uh, primarily been a retail and commercial battery sales business. Uh, started in the year uh, 2000. I'm sorry, uh, 2010. Uh, previously, I worked uh, at the health department. I guess uh, Brian remembers me pretty well. I worked for Dr. Scudder and Doug Bear in the health department. Prior to that, I owned uh, the, the Kawasaki dealership at the end of Industrial Drive. I think now it's currently the animal shelter. Uh, right now, I have uh, with my wife, I have two employees, and uh, our sales are pretty consistent. Uh, let's see. I'm a little nervous, so I appreciate your patience with me. Um, the building that we currently occupy at 48 Dowdy Road, we've uh, sort of reached our limit in terms of growth. And when the veterinary office moved, uh, I think it was Dr. Fox's building originally, we thought uh, that it would be opportune for us to purchase that building and expand into it. As you know, I think Mike Clark will attest to that with the FEMA rules and regulations, it's been really difficult to grow beyond. I mean, we had enough property there, we could have built another, uh, another building equal, equitable to the same footprint we have now, but because we're now in the flood way, or flood plain, plain. flood plain, I don't get the, uh, it's not allowed us to do that. So. Uh, we, were, we were forced to build these 400 square foot outbuildings that you see uh, that we get questioned on every day why there's a garage door on the second floor, one of them. Uh, that's all that, uh, that the current regulations would allow us to do. But that's, uh, we've, qu we've quickly outgrown that. So uh, with the renaissance that's taking place in the community, particularly with the, with the mall across the street, uh, we we thought that uh, we could purchase the, the Dr. Fox's building. We could um, uh, enhance it, uh, grow it, add some different products to it, um, uh, bringing in some major manufacturers. I think you'll see in, that, in, in the documentation I've provided to you that we wanted to bring in Toro, wanted to bring in uh, Kawasaki, uh, wanted to bring in Kohler, and obviously we just secured Honda. So that'll give 
four major lines uh, uh, that we can introduce into that building and utilize that property. Um, you know, previously when I owned Miller Motorsports, Lawrenceburg, Kawasaki, and, and, and I know time is of the essence, but I want to say, you know, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the support and leadership of Mayor Tremaine, uh, the development director, Roland Horney, Chris Schnitkin, and Mike Clark, who allowed me as a new business owner to come into this community and build a really nice store in an area that was, you know, at that time undeveloped other than the college. So I want to thank those gentlemen because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. And uh, uh, we've grown from that and we continue to grow. And uh, uh, what I've come in front of you, uh, the commission right now is I would like, to, I'm going to purchase the building. Uh, we've got a closing date of next week. Dr. Fox now lives in California. And uh, we're going to take what I feel is a blighted structure. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little rough, but as we did with uh, the uh, chiropractic office, uh, it was a chiropractic office before it was the bordello, I guess you might say, <laughs> but what we did was we cleaned it up. Uh, Gary Blackburn, Blackburn, Blackburn Construction added a portico on the front he added the commercial windows, the commercial doors. We brought it up to code. And uh, for, again, for the past eight years, we've been pretty successful. Um, we utilized inexpensive materials. We wrapped things in aluminum and vinyl. Uh, uh, the portico is uh, uh, just took what is a, a residential looking style house and made it look inviting to the, to the public. And uh, I think uh, our plan is, or I know that our plan is, to do the same thing with this Dr. Fox's property. Uh, it, it's a little rougher, but uh, considering uh, that it adjoins us, it's more valuable to me than anybody else. And, you know, in looking at the street, Dowdy Road, the businesses that are located, you do have a couple residentials uh, properties still, but it's probably the worst of all the, the buildings, and that's why I say it's sort of blighted. And I don't say that facetiously, but it's, it's true. Um, I, you know, I'm here in public, and I guess it's okay that we can talk f the finances of this project. Is that it's, it's public domain? It's, uh, uh, the purchase price of the property is fifty-three thousand. Uh, you can see in the estimation that I have by Mr. Blackburn uh, that uh, there's about eighty thousand dollars, eighty-one thousand um, dollars of enhancements. To, to make it to make it usable as a uh, retail uh, a retail store uh, that brings the total valuation of the property one hundred thirty four thousand dollars. I think uh, I didn't have an official uh, uh, valuation of the property, but the, they tell me that that property like that commercial piece of property like that on that size of that size of the land is about a hundred thousand uh, dollars which is similar to what I paid for doc, uh, the the property that I currently in uh, I in this I invested about another hundred and sixty three thousand dollars into that property which brings uh, my total investment to about two hundred and sixty three thousand uh, dollars it employs four people and uh, I think uh, we'll be well below that on the adjoining property. Uh, and, and I'll just go through very quickly the three manufacturers besides Honda that we're going to lure that that, is, that have have uh, uh, signed agreements with us to come into the city that aren't currently represented would be Toro, which has a really uh, you know not only just the name. The history of the name, but uh, the uh, plethora of product that they have. Uh, Kohler, Kohler engines are used on a lot of small uh, lawn and garden uh, tractors and other pieces of equipment, welders. Kawasaki is also used. Um, some of the products that you don't see here are represented currently by Zimmer. So uh, we won't uh, encroach upon, uh, but we'll work in cooperation with. Um, I have projected revenues of one to two million dollars. Uh, 
uh, within two to three years, uh, there is, uh, uh, I've got some numbers that's been provided by all three manufacturers uh, validating. Uh, you can say on average that each line would probably generate around $500,000 in sales and uh, two to four full-time, uh, two to four <coughs> full-time positions as well. Uh, obviously, property taxes will increase with the enhancement of the property. Um, the aesthetic en enhancements, which I think, you know, with the with the renaissance that's undergoing with the mall right now, the plaza, you know, there's we, we can't do anything less than that. I mean, we just and they're even painting the backside of the the strip plaza. So uh, I, I think it's paramount that everything else that that's facing or anywhere near vicinity needs to aesthetically uh, uh, blend with, and I think it will. Uh, now, obviously, tractor supply came in, and that took a look, I took a hit on that because they sell batteries and they sell them a lot cheaper than I do. Of course, they're not American-made, but that's not everybody's uh, interested in where batteries are manufactured. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, this will allow us to compete. And I have to, th I have to, you know, think back that when we first opened Miller Motorsports, AEP, we just started the peaking plant. Do you know they purchased 75 of those <coughs> Kawasaki mules from me? Uh, right off the bat. Uh, uh, which was a huge sale. I mean, it was a huge sale for a new business like that. And I can't help but think that uh, there might be an opportunity downstream when the port, if it ever comes to fruition, and we all hope that it does, that uh, and I don't want to base any, but I, I'm, I'm just as excited as everybody else is. And uh, these are products that industry like that uses. So, uh, you know, I, I, have to, I have to believe that there'll be an opportunity. Um, you know, as of lately, I served uh, on uh, a board out at Southeastern uh, Career Center, uh, uh, working with several other small business owners and helping uh, uh, generate ideas of what, uh, what small business can do to bring the kids, uh, the background of the kids or the schooling of the children, the curriculum de development. Um, and one of the suggestions was that certain businesses offer mentoring programs that allow the kids to come into a shop and learn small engine repair or shadow a mechanic, something that's sort of a lost art anymore. I mean, there's just, there's plenty, you, know, you can look at Lowe's, the box stores, they sell tons of it, but they don't service anything. I mean, Zimmer is really just about it. Uh, Dillsboro, uh, the, the gentleman out there, um, but it's, it's sort of a dying art. And I, one, one of the things that we're, we'd like to, we're going to, that we've written into our plan is uh, that we're going to make available uh, to Southeastern Career Center, to Lawrenceburg School System, to Ivy Tech, that if they want to have come up with a program that allows some type of credit, we'd be happy to share that facility with those kids that want to learn uh, the art, you know, whether it be for credit or whether it be for something else. But uh, what we feel is a dying a dying, uh, a dying industry. Everything is pretty much throwaway. Um, our plan is to spend uh, forty thousand dollars in match with a grant from uh, 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 this entity, uh, bringing the total expenditure to eighty thousand dollars, which will make the property a $134,000 piece of property. If it generates within the next two years $2 million in sales, I think uh, the, the payback or investment was well. It, it, the area is only going to grow. We know uh, mm -hmm. with the new leadership, with this mayor, with the economy on the rebound, you know, I, I'm not in the downtown area, but I'm close enough that I can say I'm part of your family. Uh, I want to I I ride the wave with you. I, I, every time I come into the downtown, I just, and uh, I, I think uh, if you look at that picture, it's not the prettiest building in the whole world, and it smells even worse on the inside. But Mr. Blackburn has several times done a great job for us, and done it below, under budget, and uh, under the time frame. Uh, we, uh, I apologize, all I have is a pretty simple drawing, 
but it's not going to be too complicated on the inside. We'll simply take what is a 2,000 square foot building divided down the center with a firewall per Mike Clark and, and uh, uh, whatever other codes uh, that need to be met, but uh, we'll have a showroom and a service area. We'll put a overhead garage door in the back side. Uh, there's a water problem, much like the water problem that our building suffered, but with the addition of a swale over into the new riprap that comes down off Bealby, it, it should be taken care of. I don't see an issue with that. Uh, we want to do it on a budget, but we want it to look nice and tie the two buildings together. That's our goal. Uh, we'll do it, and uh, I, again, we've operated for eight years next door, so uh, we've been successful. I, I work there with my wife, and we've worked pretty hard, much like any other small business owner. I, I, you know, and I've done it, you know, for quite a while, and I know the uh, the trials and tribulations of being a small business business owner. But boy, I'm excited about what's up, what's to come. Okay, uh, Mr. Miller, I got one question here for you. You said the total amount's going to be eighty-one thousand. So are you asking this board for forty thousand? That's correct. Which I'll match again with forty thousand. I've got one of one of the. Uh, when Mr. Fox, when I had spoke and negotiated price with Mr. Fox, he asked that I pay cash for the building, uh, which I'll do on the 21st, the closing at Dearborn Title. Uh, and I can do that, but that does, that, that really takes away quite a bit of my operating capital and probably one of the, you know, the necessitates me being here in front of you. Uh, he said, I'll make you a heck of a deal on the building, but you're going to write me a check and I write me a UCB. I want a, a bank check and it'll be done. So uh, I said I would do that because I think it's a $100,000 building and at 53000 that's quite a deal. We can't really go wrong. Again, we just need to clean it up. Get the kennels off the back, go inside. It's a simple cinder block poured slab building. There's nothing, it's, the, the, the construction is nothing... Uh, uh, too entailed, and what we'll do, and I, I you know, I, I worked uh, with Mr. Kittle over at UCB for a number of years, and he'll tell you that I'm pretty frugal, and we do things on a, on a budget. We reuse, and so now you know why I'm here in front of you. It's, All right. Uh, Hate to kind of move this on. We still there. got more to come up. Is there any questions from the board? Yeah, I, right have, I have one question. So, as looking at it from the street, the street appearance, you're going to have a new roof. New siding on the front, new doors, and new windows? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. We'll probably take the scrub trees out of the front. We'll fill that in. We'll take some of the fill out of the back, out of the hillside, within reason. How do you tie it to the uh, your current location? We'll concrete. We'll make a, we have a 12-foot uh, apron that will be used to display the equipment across the front. As well as tie the two properties together. A little bit of a subway bridge. And one of the problems is, and I'll be brief, but uh, Downey Road doesn't allow for truck, although it's, it's zoned per the police chief to be truck loading and unloading, it does create a hazard on the street to have those trucks and a tow motor out. So what we like to do is with the combination of the two properties, with that amount of frontage, we should be able to get the semis in. All this equipment comes via skids. So we have to uh, be able to load and unload and that that's one of the uh, benefits of adding the two. So we'll pull a concrete apron from one driveway to the other. 48, the battery store is, is all blacktop with just a concrete side apron, but we'll pour an apron in the front. At a later date, maybe we'll concrete or gravel. You know, again, the city's got uh, so much parking that's got to be provided. Mike uh, will be a little clear. I see his hand up. Mike's got a question here. Uh, and just to comment, I know, Terry, we've discussed this before. Um, when you move forward, I really need to get you to come and sit down with me mm -hmm. because this is unique, which you mentioned. It's in the floodplain. Sure, sure. So we're going to have to do this and follow the criteria and make sure we keep this a non-substantial improvement. Well, so we thought financially, I, according to the FEMA rules and regulations, that, that, that $81,000, based upon the assessed value, is well underneath and, and would be... Sorry, I, I have a question for yes, you. Yes, wait a minute. Uh, I'm going to continue okay, with that. Mike, did, do you see anything wrong with the way he's proceeding to change that building? Uh, 
Uh, I can't I can't see anything wrong now, but we need to sit down and we need to look at certain items. Um, and there again, it's the assessed value of the structure, sure. um, excluding the value of the land. So we've got to make the dollars and cents mm -hmm. work out. And I think with what he's proposing, we can do that, but we need to sit down and make sure we're on the right page before I can issue anything. Exactly. Okay. And, and just to just to tag on to that, we were forced to buy the property we're currently, so financially most businesses would do, just to let you know how the FEMA rules affect, we had to go in and buy out the <coughs> loan, tying up more of my capital that would allow me to expand. That's how ridiculous, uh, so that the FEMA rules in terms of insurance are not applicable if in fact I paid cash and owned the property outright, which I was forced to do. But again, that ties up investment capital that could bring into the community. Thank you very much, FEMA. I mean, I, I don't want to go off on a tangent. My question was going to be, you have four employees now, you, your wife, and two others. Yes. And you made reference quickly to four additional employees? Two to four. Two to four. Can I, I ask you what the wage on those people would be? Well, a typical uh, mechanic, and those are the wages we're, we're, we're probably going to solicit, would typically be in the 15 to $22 an hour range, okay. depending on their experience or age. There would be two of those? There would be two of those. There would be two of those. And, and the uh, other two? I'm sorry? And the other two people? Well, there would probably be a sales two. position that might be based more upon commission, commission. And, a, and an hourly rate or a salary. Okay. Uh, okay. We're not sure yet. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what the sales look like. Like what, are said, the, what are the two existing employees? I'm not going to ask you about you and your wife. Okay. What are the two existing employees being paid? Can I ask? Uh, yeah. Uh, is it? It's public forum. Is that okay? I mean, if you don't want to answer, it's all right. Could I tell you? In, in, I mean, could I tell you after? I'd be yeah. more than happy to Absolutely. submit. Yeah, fair enough. Sure. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they are probably well known in the community, so it may not Any be fair. Any questions from the board? I'll entertain a motion if any oh. board members like. I would I would make a motion that we grant his request based on the situation or the information that he's provided for the forty thousand um, dollars. I don't think we have much risk with him leaving in a year or two. No. He's got many years <coughs> tied up here. He's owning the property. Um, we've been we've been here for quite a while. And I would make a motion that we 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 grant him his forty thousand dollar grant. Is that is that contingent upon him putting in the other forty? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It, based on the eighty thousand dollar commitment. Okay, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Got a second by Mr. Reibold. All in favor? Aye. 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 Votes unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you your out. confidence in my abilities. I'll do you a good job. Uh, next one, Jeff Talker's Sports Complex. He's got a display for us. Yeah. Set up a time where you guys are available. Good evening. Uh, I'm Jeff Talkers with Lang Consultants uh, here to present to you the the preliminary idea of uh, indoor sports building on the Lawrenceburg or adjacent to the Lawrenceburg Fairground properties. The uh, map I have there is an overall map of the entire fairgrounds property. My uh, client, Jay Kapinga, has uh, a contract on the four acres that uh, are privately owned within the fairgrounds. And <coughs> the idea is to construct an indoor sports building uh, and the uh, appropriate parking and also, hopefully, uh, work something out with the LCD possibly on management of the outdoor fields and making this a regional sports complex for for the area. Um, 
as you can see I've drawn in yellow the rough idea of the building but it's still very preliminary Jay can talk a little bit about the possibilities of the building and what it could be um, it's going to be sp sports oriented for the youth of the area um, I have projected a possible route for a road to go behind the speedway and back up to Rudolph Way someday in the future as a access to the other ball fields in Greendale if that ever came to be so that no one would have to drive on 50 to get from fields to fields so that's just the black line um, I'll let Jay speak a little bit about himself and what they <coughs> plan but uh, he is with the group Evo Sports Group that will be the developer of the project and they'll be teaming with Town and Country Sports Center if you know about in Wilder, Kentucky. Uh, we designed that in 1998 and uh, it's going strong. They just built a second building this past year that's uh, seven volleyball courts, five basketball courts. Um, and uh, I've always thought of this area as a good spot for this type of facility I think the idea talking with the mayor was this is not a practice facility for a bunch of youth teams it's probably going to be more of a tournament facility where people will come on the weekends to play here and attract teams from all over the Midwest hopefully so I'll let uh, Jay speak Uh, my name is Jay Campinga. Um, thanks for the opportunity to come in and talk to you tonight. And the, the basic objective is just to give you an overview of what we are looking to accomplish. We're not here to ask for anything at this point, but would encourage your feedback as we you know, continue the process on you know, you know, the right people to be talking with and you know, other things to uh, take into consideration. Um, some of the things we just want to accomplish, we'll introduce ourselves, give you a brief, uh, a brief background on ourselves, the, the partnership that comprises EVO Sports Group, um, describe the concept that we have, or the preliminary plan for the Lawrenceburg project, a multi-sport multi um, facility. And um, I guess the other component to that that would be important to mention is we're looking at a, uh, a medical tenant to join us in that facility um, and where we sort of stand where the project is currently and then the uh, and then answer any questions you have um, as far as introductions go again my name is Jay Kampenga um, I'm from Northern Kentucky I've uh, lived here all my life spent a lot of time in Lawrenceburg when we get snow um, it's been a dismal season for snow but uh, um, I've been in real estate development all my life, um, worked for Paul Hammer Companies and uh, Ashley Commercial Group, and my family's been in the development business uh, since, I, since I was a kid. Um, the other two, one partner is here, Ryan Schaefer, um, and then the other partner is JT Roberts. Um, collectively, <coughs> that's the Evo Sports Group, so they have a development component you have the sports component and the operations component and then facility management and operations. Um, so I think the, the important thing is to emphasize that we're building, we want to build a sports facility, but we're not looking to build it and turn it over to somebody else to run. We want to build it and we're going to operate it like we've operated others, another sports facility in Northern Kentucky that's been successful. Um, as far as uh, the <coughs> background on town and country specifically and the operation side of that business, I'm going to let Ryan talk a little bit more about that and then we can talk more specifically about the project and the plans and kind of where we are today. Hello, good evening. Um, I, I don't want to waste uh, time, but I do want to answer questions. Town and country has been in business for, for quite a period of time, 1995. It started in Park Hills. Uh, moved over to to Wilder currently uh, it has basketball it has volleyball it has pickleball uh, as Jeff mentioned we just added on a 45,000 square foot building Ooh, pickleball's good so pickleball's up and coming uh, you have to google it later but uh, it, it, it's a really good uh, and growing sport we have there 
Uh, there is an indoor outdoor component, which is why the Lawrence Burke Conservancy and some of the access to the adjacent fields are good. Uh, over the next three weeks, um, currently, just to give you an idea, we're bringing close to 600 soccer teams um, to the Wilder Cincinnati area um, over the next three weeks. Uh, and, and that pretty much will happen through the connections and the groups and, and what we try to do uh, based on uh, scheduling and based on programming with the current you know, venues at this area. Uh, we want to make sure that we balance out you know, all the various things that are going on so we're not overloading the area. Uh, I know there's other events that occur at this facility, so programming is, is extremely important uh, for us to make sure that we make this uh, not only an area for the community, but also a destination and something where we can bring in and generate revenue for the city uh, as well as uh, interest into the area. Uh, town and country, um, again, has got a medical component to it. Um, I, I've talked and we've talked to some local folks about this. One of the interesting concepts that they've had is, is being able to you know, have that uh, OCH therapy or sports you know, therapy and be able to use some of the amenities on site to help you know, facilitate that. And, and there is current interest in having space inside this building you know, for that. So just a quick 20,000 square foot, you know, 20,000 mile high overview there. But that's what we're looking to do. Uh, we have extreme interest in moving forward. And we've been sort of navigating through the waters, working with uh, you know, Jeff here locally. Uh, we've spoken with Maxwell locally and, and some other you know, local, you know, talked with some folks at the city and city county and trying to navigate our ways through to the next step. Um, so obviously it's, it's a big project I mean from a dollar standpoint you know we can range anywhere from five million to fifteen million dollars based on the size of the ultimate facility that we go with and who the tenants end up being and again and just kind of reiterating what Ryan was saying you know the, the original concept was to build a indoor facility that was going to house some volleyball and basketball courts and have an indoor turf field, just a general turf field. And as we've gotten more and more involved in this particular project, as other projects that we're involved in have continued to grow, you see that there's a, you know, there's a demand for premium sports facilities. And given the location that Lawrenceburg has in the tri-county area, or tri-market or tri-state area, it's, it's an ideal, you know, it's an ideal um, location to serve Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati, and also Lawrenceburg. And, and that being said, based on what we see as future potential opportunities, it goes from being a, you know, just a regional draw to potentially even being a national draw, depending on how things could potentially evolve. And what makes it exciting is you have the LCD's property, you have additional property that's you know, sports related or could be you know, maybe further developed or utilized in, in other ways that will further enhance um, you know this project as far as the building size goes you know it will ultimately depend on the tenants we've been talking with um, I, I think it's in Dearborn Hospital about taking um, space um, they're very excited about the project there's no guarantees that they will you know be a tenant but that's the direction that we're going in right now as having them as an anchor tenant. There's um, a retail opportunity that may also come with this. So again, starting from you know a box footprint and, and then you start getting people involved and get and, and seeing you know interest in the community, that's sort of why we don't have a definitive plan to show you today, because we really want to see how these other things plan you know play out. That's also where you know the need for picking up adjacent space partially that the city owns um, may be key in, in you know, fully utilizing the opportunity so um, if we don't get the the property that is the city's it's not going to keep us from doing our project it just helps us make it a bigger project so um, we're also just we're also working with the local Maxwell construction far as a local contractor um, so we're trying to engage as much as we possibly can within the community in order to facilitate this from an operation standpoint there is one other piece I'd like to throw out there just to see what sort of feedback or interest there may be but one of the facilities that we like to use and 
you know my kids train out at UC is uh, is called a bubble um, it would be a natural building a, a, a mason building or steel building if you will for your medical and tenants and components but the benefit of a bubble uh, not only is it you know up and down but it can be 365 uh, the bubble that we train in down at uh, University, of University of Cincinnati is about 200 and maybe 200 feet wide by 360 feet long. Uh, football, soccer, lacrosse, uh, baseball, infield training, uh, it, it gives a lot. Uh, there was some concern initially, we talked about that with you know, keeping it clean and aesthetic, and those are things we're looking into, but I did want to mention that that is, uh, as you look at the design here, you see the, the shape of the lot, you know, this adjacent space that we've kept available, you know, on the main four acres that we have under contract is the area that we'd like to look to expand that footprint a bit. Uh, parking is obviously, you know, concerned. <coughs> we understand the, the flood and, and we've talked about improvements and percolation of the water and, and the pipes and the LCD and we've got a lot of detail and Jeff brings a lot of great value there. We've looked at a lot of these things, but again, we come here, we introduce the idea to you. Um, concerns, thoughts, excited, you know, whatever, whatever your feedback may be and see what you guys. I've, I've got one question off the bat I can think of. You, you uh, said something about using the outside fields, and then you said something about enhancing, maybe building onto them. The ones that use those fields now, I guess it is girls softball, peewee football. Is there any other ones over there? Babe, that's right, Babe Ruth is over there. And the city has put a lot of money, and LCD has put a lot of money in those fields to guarantee that those kids have somewhere to play. Now. So are we giving full control to you guys? Do they have to ask you when they can schedule or what? Or are you just wanting to use those fields? Well, I, I think, um, one, we haven't had any detailed discussions about that. The intention isn't for us to come in and then take away community sports. It's, you know, it, it helps manage the process, manage the fields. I mean, there's a, a cycle to natural grass. And where we feel like we can add value is is by helping with the scheduling potentially it's not to take you know we will work in any way that there's an opportunity to work we're not coming in and mandating oh well if you want us to do it then we need 100 percent control and we're gonna you know take away you know the league you know play that's community related it's again there's so many details that need to be sort of worked out and that are open but the our intention is not to come in here and disrupt community the way it is it's to come in and add to what you already have and you have some amazing fields that's got you know these guys do a great job maintaining them we play you know with our kids we're both fathers and have active kids and you know public I mean if it's a considered a public you know sports center I mean they do a fantastic job compared to other places we play so I mean you know there's even things that we can you know that these, away from that. these fields are free right now. If you guys manage them, are they still going to be free? So again, part of what, pardon me, Jay, yeah. part, part, part of what we really want when we talk about programming are these special events. So if this uh, space is being occupied for 26 weekends out of the year and there's four free weekends, what we want to do is maximize our opportunity to bring some destination type events to the city. Uh, we don't want to damage the fields, hurt the fields, charge folks that are already using the fields. But if we can say, hey, this is not being used the uh, third weekend in May and the, you know, the, the fourth weekend in June and in August, you know, we can try to look towards scheduling something and promoting something with other fields, adjacent fields, the fields that we have, indoor and outdoor, um, and, and trying to create some events here. <coughs> that was the sole purpose, is just trying to integrate the community into what we do, not enhance, if anything. You know what's going on not take over anything from uh, uh, someone loses and someone gains I believe it would be a win-win for everyone uh, as long as the fields maintained we talked about with the LCD they were saying they spent I can't remember what they said I could have swore it was 60 hours is that what you told me 60 so I mean there's a tremendous investment in those fields um, it would also benefit the city you know to, to use them in different ways you know if it worked out for Have you met with the yeah. LCD board about the fields we presented just the concept of you know hey we're looking at building a facility here there's obviously a lot of tie-in if we are doing you know have an outdoor field and an indoor field with uh, what you already have going on here and I'm Is sure they shared the same concerns that our chairman shared 
on on, on, on well yeah I mean there was some discussion and again I not verbatim what all was discussed but um, about what do you do with people that have been playing there for years and you know your local you know, softball team that you know has space and it's they're not paying for it or whatnot and and again I'll just I'll read it again the, the focus is on the building and what we're trying to accomplish there the the having these adjacent fields is just a benefit it. Well, that, that's the question I have. If if you didn't have great access to the fields, if it was very limited and you knew it was limited, does that affect your decision to go forward? With no, this? no, it doesn't. No, not at all. Okay, and so that's what we were trying. <coughs> okay, it's peripheral. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about two different things. Absolutely. Yeah. It just yeah. It, it creates a much larger opportunity for Lawrenceburg and for us as a company. To try to build this as a destination, tournament level um, playing field, playing space, whether it's baseball, lacrosse, outdoor, you know, soccer, or softball. Um, there's so you would be willing to work out with the LCD or whatever Absolutely. maintenance costs are proportionally if you were to be able to use it part of the time. We want to work with with them, and we can demonstrate what the opportunities are. Um, and provide ideas on how to to further maximize maybe some of the, the space based on our you know our um, experience <coughs> and, and there's additional land that's you know maybe underutilized again we're exploring the options and the opportunities right now so um, it's kind of hard to say this is what we want and this is what we need to have I mean it's you're sort of looking at two things here if, if the city of Lawrenceburg loves the idea of having a, you know, a, a draw and bringing all these families and having this audience. It's one thing. If it's really just to cater to, you know, basketball leagues and volleyball leagues, and you know, you're going to get the spillover from Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati because we already control and run those leagues there now. And it's a logical, you know, place for, you know, for us to. You know, to expand to as far as that league play goes, we're talking about something very different. You're talking about bringing, trying to get national, um, some national tournaments, and that really becomes a buy-in of everybody. It's not something that we can do on our own. I've got Mike. Is that considered the floodplain? Uh, that is levee protected. Yeah. Where's the levee on the old railroad track? Yes. Yep. Greendale levee does protect that area. And it's certified and everything? Is that? FEMA, FEMA, FEMA? certified, but not Army Corps certified. <laughs> Here, How I'm about parking? We, You know, that's a busy, busy area in the summertime. That That's something I actually met with Jeff Talkers on, and we were addressing that. Um, because you know and I did notify him that you know you cannot count the front parking of the fairground for this facility parking and also to know that there's 25 to 3500 people every third Sunday at the antique market you know and just different different things that they need to incorporate into their schedule from <coughs> Friday night motorcycle races to the Saturday night speedway races. Um, th there's a lot of things. I think they're aware of all of them, and they're kind of incorporating that into their plan. There's one. There's one other question I have, and right there, uh, LCD has a pumping station, and it's hard to know. In fact, that pumping station is too high. The water does not all drain to it. And Greendale's going to do a lot of improvements on Highway 50 there, and they're going to be needing more runoff this is probably directed more towards mr seymour do you see anything because you're wanting to use the land our land in front of that pumping station right from the drawings i've seen okay but no not quite to the front but do you see any problem in the future of having to build maybe a retention pond or you know something well, all the water is going to be drained. That's actually there. what all the bottoms are. The, the whole fairground is basically was originally a basin, but right. it, it's more pushed back towards um, Ridge Avenue. Um, 
that that is all lower back there that is the detention area um, once it exceeds that you know then pulse station starts to pick up and and help out so, okay, so you don't see any problem with anything going there in front of that pumping station because i know that pumping station's in bad shape it's been bad shape since the day it was built and you're going to have to redo it sooner or later i don't think you ever I don't think you ever see any. It'll never wear out, will it? <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying it's never used. This doesn't interfere with that. Okay. That I, was, uh, fellas, how many parking spaces are you talking about? Well, you know, when they build, they've got to have so many parking spots. How, how are they going to figure that into what we've got over there? Wow. It's real simple. The, it's going to be based on square footage. For what they what their building is, what they occupy, and for that use, uh, I can't recall. You know what it is if it's one for every hundred or two hundred square feet. Uh, but th there is a formula in the code book that spells out what they will be required to have. Formula ought to be six parking spots for one child: mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, grandma, <laughs> grandpa. <laughs> Divorced, married again, another one. Maybe that'll be eight. <laughs> that's how many you'll have. You got a carpool. Yeah. That's, it's extra if you're divorced. <clears throat> we listen to Mike again. Yeah, I tell you, I just got one comment. Um, they're getting you guys five years too late, but my daughter's played select soccer, and we've traveled all over her one league. We've been to their facility over in Wilder. It is top notch. I do. I just want you to know that. That my question to you is: Who owns the fairgrounds? What part of it? Which part? All I of mean, them. There's city-owned property in the. The Legion areas. had a hundred-year lease, and they did what? That lease is. Um, it hadn't expired, but they gave no, it back it, to the city of Lawrence. It's null and void now. No, the city owns yeah, a good portion of it, and the conservancy owns a good portion in different areas. Actually, that line right there, I think it depicts it pretty well, what the yeah. LCD is and then what the city has, the way we understand Which it. Which begs the next question. What are you guys asking us for tonight? Uh, just nothing. a conversation it's yep. to tell you yeah. hey we're, we're we've been working on this project for you know kind of behind the scenes for six months had the land on the contract been working with Jeff met with Maxwell we have construction pricing for one type of building um, we're been investigating the when Ryan mentioned the bubble type of building which you know they've come a long way they're they're very cost e effective Mm -hmm. and they can come in any color that you want them and you can I mean do a lot of really neat things with them but they make you know the sort of the barrier entry to be able to do more cost less as far it's as kind of an outside the box question yep. what impact do you guys have when you're up in maximum on housing I'm just curious uh, that's a great question that I because we have a lot of demands on housing here between the casino and all the other issues that are going on the arc and everything else that's going Convention center, you know. It's Are you saying you need somebody to come in and build homes? Well, I don't well, know. Always need that. I don't know. That's <laughs> probably we a got fair some good incentives for that. <laughs> no, it's you a know, great question. It's Especially if you do a national, regional event, everybody's got to stay someplace, you right? Know? So. Well, and that's where your hotel and the you know all those things become key to um, to what you're offering. So Wilder's added quite a few hotels. It used to be nothing when you got off at Double A, <laughs> and now they got a Hampton Inn. There's three of them. Yeah, There's two with one under construction. So you're you're actually not going to be asking us for any monetary grants. Say that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, we don't want to get too far down the road. Okay. And things be a surprise. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I will be honest with you. We have another sports com complex that's interested in Lawrenceburg here downtown, and we told them to go ahead. Not good with their plans and come back to us and talk to us. He just wanted to know if there's any interest and we said yes there is interest so we kind of need to hear both of you. Um, um, do you think two of them would go in small town? Nope. So it's got to be one or the other? I, I'd say that I mean of course I'm going to pump us up more but you know we operate. We're an operator. I mean we're operating and this is an expansion opportunity for us 
to build on what we already have, and that's you know it really comes down to the league play. I mean, it's your basketball leagues, your volleyball leagues, select soccer, select basketball, you know, the pickleball. Um, it's taking the metal component, dry, you know, you know, adding that to this, which is a great feature for you know, somebody, you know, a hospital or I mean, a you know, hospital, Tri Health or Dearborn or whomever that might be, where they have a facility where they can do occupational therapy and and then you know they're not leaving that facility there's everything that is at their disposal rather than sending them someplace else um, and then there's we haven't really even talked about the retail side so we're looking at it as a complete development project we're not just looking at throwing a box in the middle of of the city and I, and I honestly I don't know anything about the other project I mean I heard about it but I saw the article on the yeah, no idea but emphasize is. we're operators I mean and that's what that's why we're different I mean we're the ones that are going to feed it we're not going to go look to hire somebody else to manage it and hopefully that it you know, does well so and, and to touch on that I mean there is something to be tied into the community we're, we're very tied into in, in our current facilities we're very tied into the local communities and the local sports <laughs> programs uh, I mean NKYBC you know rents out the entire you know tremendous leases tremendous amount of space and uh, the king you know the various soccer clubs uh, you know we're affiliated with with multiple soccer clubs and uh, just trying to to expand and be part of the community um, and we're already we already do this having said that so, have you guys thought about working with our convention facility it okay. No, I mean it came up and you know again you're exploring all the ideas and what the options are and now we're trying to sort through them so I mean I think there's certainly um, a benefit or a huge benefit to you know looking at what um, venues can be held and what can be done there and then just on the hotel side and the casino um, I mean that could be a great draw for the casino as much as it is for us I mean if you have you know 600 teams coming in well they need some place to stay and they're always looking at well we have an 18,000 square foot facility just yeah. auditorium alone mm -hmm. and 11 breakouts and everything else and river access be great I mean the more amenities around the better mm -hmm. okay so you're just here to see if there's any interest then in for tonight well, right for the, yeah for so feedback so and, uh, yeah. Great, great uh, so, yeah. so I could say there is, no, I could say there is interest here um, if you can come back you know and let us know what you expect from us sure. what you would like to get and, and everything you'd like to do now are you are you the governing entity that would decide whether or not city land participates in a project or how does uh, that um, that's is that where we come to you is that, that redevelopment is that redevelopment property I believe that's city owned property correct so uh, property yeah so we may also direct you and ask you to present to city council as well um, but we're using the bond as a city um, transfers it to redevelopment if they're interested in the project right yeah I would agree with that that would probably be how a project like this would work Mr. Chairman, I'd like to know if Mr. Messmore has anything to add on this project. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't think I have anything to add. Okay. Did you know about this? Uh, yes, <laughs> I have been. In, we've had several conversations. Oh, you know, okay. I mean, I think what you know. Obviously, there are some relationship issues that we have to work very closely with the other things that are going on in there. But there's a big part of the year. There's not a whole lot going on there at all. Uh, but I think there's, uh, you know, regional some regional opportunities that uh, um, a facility like this can uh, really bring some uh, interest to the community, traffic, spending some money, uh, enjoying our fine city. That's a that's a great question. How does your this facility, if you did it, how would it play into the winter months? Into the winter months. The winter. Well, no, there's no. spring and there's act plenty of the activities they do in the winter. Yeah. My grandson's in. He goes he'd to the river. He'd be busy in the winter too. It'd be our busier time. Yeah. That well, one thing my interest would be though is keeping those fields free and under the control of the governing bodies of them now. Babe Ruth, Peepley football, girls softball, because they're not going to like nobody telling them when they can use their fields. And like I said, the city's put a lot of money. LCDs put a lot of money in those fields for that reason. Well, they for them to be, have they somewhere. Can't be abandoned. Yes. Yeah. For sure. 
All right. I think it's great. Um, I think it's exciting. I think something like this is attractive to young families, young professionals who would move here uh, or relocate here. You know, it's a, an amenity that would add to the community a great deal. Did you guys bring us any copies of the map? <coughs> I do not have any extra copies. I I'd be happy to get you over Tight budget, huh? <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Moving on, Mr. Weldon. <coughs> uh, yes, sir, I thank you. Uh, the commission has before them a proposed resolution, uh, which for the Redevelopment Commission would be resolution number one. Um, Mrs. Brookbank, do you have that? I gave it. I gave Tyler the yeah. original with the attachments. He might have taken it. He's got the book. Do you do me a favor and keep that? And if it's passed, then I don't have mine. they'll pass it back and forth. Decide and you'll just make sure you got my original. I think so. I might have. I don't know what I did. But okay, I'll make sure. Um, and with your honor's permission, I'll do the first reading, and after the first reading, I'll open it up for any Put questions in the, yes. the commission. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, this would be titled Resolution Number 1-2017, Lawrenceburg Redevelopment Commission, City of Lawrenceburg, Dillon County, Indiana. A resolution and acquisition list to identify and acquire property for redevelopment and urban renewal. Whereas the Lawrenceburg, Indiana Redevelopment Commission, LRC, is empowered and tasked by Indiana law to identify and develop areas needing development, to investigate, study, and survey those areas, to replan and dispose of the areas needing redevelopment, to promote the use of land in a manner that best serves the social and economic interests of the city and its inhabitants, and to select and acquire the areas needing redevelopment pursuant to Indiana Code 36714111, and whereas the LRC is empowered and tasked by Indiana law to undertake urban renewal projects pursuant to Indiana Code 36714130, and whereas the LRC has acquired and accepted a conceptual master plan for the development of an, of an identified area needing development and urban renewal uh, project, which is attached here to and incorporated by reference as Exhibit A, and Exhibit A re uh, references um, the American Structure Point uh, master plan that's available online, uh, and we've got a hard copy that will be attached to this resolution. Um, whereas the LRC is empowered and tasked by Indiana law to acquire, remove, and demolish real property to eliminate unhealthful, unsanitary, or unsafe conditions pursuant to Indiana Code 36714132A. And whereas the LRC has identified certain real property necessary for the redevelopment urban renewal project, a map of which is attached here to and incorporated by reference as Exhibit B. And an acquisition list for the property is attached here to and incorporated by reference as Exhibit C. And whereas the LRC now determines that the purchase and or remo removal of the real property identified as necessary and critical to the implementation of redevelopment and urban renewal plan, and that the purchase of the real property furthers the statutory goals and duties of the LRC and will promote the use of the land in the manner that best serves the social and economic interests of the City of Lawrenceburg and its inhabitants, and whereas, pursuant to Indiana Code 36-7-14-19-B, the LRC specifically authorizes the purchase of parcel 15-7-14-402-072.000-026, the Scudder property, at an amount above the average of the two independent appraisals for the reason that the purchase of this parcel is necessary and essential to the project and cannot be accomplished without paying the asking price of $420,000 set by the seller and necessary for the master plan. Now therefore be resolved by Lawrenceburg Indiana Redevelopment Commission that the conceptual master plan be and hereby is adopted and implemented as a statutory redevelopment and urban renewal project subject to any changes made during engineering and construction in the approval of planning and zoning and that the property contained in the acquisition list shall be purchased at the prices listed herein subject to appropriation. Uh, exhibit B is an overhead map of the area identified. Exhibit C is a property acquisition list. Uh, first address is 37 East High Street or the Thomas property. Uh, the purchase price, which is the average of two appraisals, is $160,000. Second piece of property is 111 through 115 Short Street, the Scudder property. The average of two appraisals is $170,500. Uh, 
The third property is 119 Short Street, the Carpenters Union. The average of the two appraisals is $123,500, uh, but an offer has been accepted uh, to purchase that for $75,000. Uh, the fourth property is 31 East High Street, the Linus property. That uh, property has not yet been appraised. Um, and that is listed because it may or may not be essential to uh, any potential demolition or renovation <laughs> occurring uh, within the uh, above listed properties. 35 East High Street, which is the Berry property, the average of two appraisals is $70,000 even. The 140 East High Street is the Schilling property, the last unit of the row house is in the easement that extends into the parking lot. The average of two appraisals is $55,500. Uh, 124 Short Street is the old firehouse. The average of two appraisals is $91,000, but an offer has been accepted to purchase that property for $88,000. Uh, 130 Short Street is the old post office. That uh, uh, property has not been appraised. And the final property listed is William and Short Street. That is the Midwest Insurance property. That property also has not been appraised. Um, so the resolution uh, before you, if, if adopted and accepted today, would incorporate uh, as a master plan for redevelopment and urban renewal the American Structure Point uh, conceptual plan, which of course can be modified uh, during the engineering and construction phase, and would accept and adopt this property acquisition list as target properties to be purchased uh, in conjunction with this property um, with the uh, specific approval to deviate and go above the average of the two appraisals for the Scudder property uh, as listed here in. Um, Your Honor, I would open the uh, resolution up to any questions. If there aren't any questions, then I would just ask for a vote uh, on the resolution. I would like the, you to know that just because they read down an address doesn't mean we're going out to buy that property. It's just on our map. Okay. Yes, sir, Your Honor, that, that's correct. Any other questions from the board? If not, I'll take a motion what, to accept the resolution that we want. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Motion to accept the resolution as read. So moved. A motion by Dennis to have a second. I'll second that. And a second by Paul Seymour. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Aye. You're against? Yeah. Okay. Roll call, please. Roll call, member Aaron Cook? No. Member Bob Rival? Yes. Member Dennis Hutchins? Yes. Member Paul Seymour Sr.? Yes. Okay, so motion passed. Three to one. Yes. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like you to ask Del Weldon to make sure he follows through with Mr. Scudder so he's up to date on the right joint side because he's got some tech issues. So. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you are following through with Mr. Scudder because. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Having now. Okay. Yes, sir, Your Honor. The, uh, the next step in this process will be to um, carry out the approved purchase of the properties uh, that have already been addressed previously by the Redevelopment Commission. I'm working on all of those properties. The next step, specifically in regard to the Scudder property, would be to execute an, an option contract. Uh, this particular resolution will pass through council and uh, the planning commission, and then we'll come back for a final vote at the next redevelopment meeting uh, to finalize the acquisition list and master plan. All right, thank you. So thank you. we're we're approximately 30 days out uh, from the final approval, but the option contract can occur immediately. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, I think moving on. Old business, uh, Mr. Weldon, uh, firehouse. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Um, in regard to the purchase of the firehouse, I've drafted um, and discussed with uh, Matt and John Davis um, the specific terms of purchase, which obviously have already been approved by the commission. The only question I had uh, and would like some input into, uh, and, and this is something that we'll work on as we develop or I develop some processes to help me anticipate uh, the desires and wants of the commission, would be for this building, uh, is a uh, inspection necessary or is that desired? Uh, before the purchase is made or was that uh, contemplated I suppose and, uh, by the Commission in the purchase and just wanted to get some guidance there from you guys the only uh, question I had was when we wrapped up with him was when are they going to vacate 
And that's a good question. I was actually a little confused. Because they're using that for storage right, right. now. So. And, I, and I thought they wanted 60 days to clear out. He wants the purchase and then 60 days, which is fine. I talked to Matt about that. Um, so we went. I went ahead and I had the uh, purchase contract ready. Um, but now as we approach closing, I just want to know if you guys wanted an I think an we're inspection. okay with those terms. Okay. My understanding is that they did some structural work to the out to the wall closest to the river on the alley. Yeah, and uh, and then there's also some uh, uh, restaurant equipment in there that will that stays. Can, will, yeah, will he said he's going to leave that and, yeah. and get rid of and it. And I think that came from the the bakery that was it by did. the Eagle Radio. So and then we got to figure out what to do with that. So you guys will I'll keep you informed. I just want a little guidance, but. We can move forward with the sale without an, uh, an inspection, and I'm okay with that. Anybody have anything different or anything else you want to see on that? Okay. Thank you. Nelson Firehouse uh, moved the approval of claims. It's properly certified. So I move. Second. Approval of the claims. I'll second. second. Second by Dennis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Past. Anybody from the audience? Been a long meeting. You guys. Tom Snyder has nothing. <laughs> Don't it's, only, it's only five till six. Don't tempt me. Whose job was it? Change that, Mario. <laughs> Didn't do it. <laughs> All right, I have a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Aaron. Second. <laughs> Dennis, second. All in favor. Aye. All right. <coughs> Meeting's adjourned. Hey, I have your copy. Do you I'll need it? Oh, you can't wear them kind of belt, belt buckles when it's snowing outside. There's a, there's a western belt buckle. I got a, I got a little bathroom right now, man. Okay, good meeting. Thanks. Are the roads clean? 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 Are the roads we need a road trip over there. Where are they? Uh, yeah, the no, 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 no. Yep. Okay. Well, the difference might be, I mean, are you asking me what the difference is? Uh, well, of course, they're both leasing. They're leasing from Greg. I mean, he owns the property, so it's really none of our business how, who he leases to or you know, how he leases. The only potential wow. difference, and I don't know if it's important or not, or it's a factor or not, is if we actually fund the duration of some buildings that are in litigation.